boomers have had it the easiest when it comes to housing and they've massively benefited as housing affordability has deteriorated for every future generation. So boomers are up and you're down. Well not you personally, but a large percentage of younger people. I'm Biko Konstantinos and that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey, I've got nothing against baby boomers. In fact, if you are from that generation, I love you. And this video in no way is going to try and bash boomers. But I am going to look at some of the differences or comparison between the boomers and future generations when it comes to the housing market. So if you don't mind me using a motive type YouTube titles to try and grab attention, consider subscribing to my channel. Just like this golden amber and water lily candle, you're gonna love it. And make sure you click that like button. Just knowing you will's going to help me make this video. Now back to boomers. Baby Baby boomers were born between 1946 and 1964. And after that, we have Gen X, born 1965 to 1980. Millennials, born 1981 to 1996. And Gen Z, born 1997 to 2010. Now, the majority of baby boomers would have been buying a house during the 1980s and the 1990s. Now, there's one very peculiar thing about houses during that period. They were bloody cheap. And when I say cheap, I'm talking make your guests pay for their dinner at your wedding type cheap. I'm talking turning off the car when you roll down the hill type cheap. I'm talking mysteriously leaving the pub when it's your time to shout type cheap. We're going to look at house prices from 1981 to give us our base. In Sydney, the median house price was about 79000 Canberra around 58000 Brisbane, Melbourne and Perth in the 40000s and Adelaide and Hobart in the 30000s. Now in 1981, the average wage was 15800 so when we compare that against the house prices, Sydney was five times the average wage, Canberra was 3.7 times, and every other city was under three times the average wage at the time. Now, no matter what way you cut it, that was cheap as chips. And guess what? Chips aren't even cheap anymore. So you've screwed that up for us as well, boomers. Just kidding, I love you. But what about the high mortgage rates back in the day? Well, it's true in the 1980s, mortgage rates were much higher, with around 10% in 1980 climbing all the way to 17% by the end of the decade. So yes, mortgage rates were high during this decade, but houses were still so very cheap. What's a Greek cocktail made out of? Water. Because we're cheap. Just kidding. I add lemon. But after the 1980s, the direction for mortgage rates was down, down, down. And they've never gone anywhere near those lofty heights ever again. But even though boomers had much higher mortgage rates, saving to buy a home and then repay it was so, so much easier. Check out this graph which displays the ratio of the average mortgage size to annual average wages. In the 1980s, it ranged between two and three, and in the 1990s, between three and four. So when boomers were buying and paying off houses, the average loan was mostly between two to four times the average earnings. So back here in 1981, the average mortgage was 2.4 times wages, and that equates to around 38,000. So even with high mortgage rates, because mortgages were only 2.4 times the wages, repaying the mortgage was comparably easy. But as you can see, it gets worse for each successive generation. And the average mortgages are now sitting at over eight times the average wage. But in some places like Sydney, I suspect it will be way, way higher than that. Here's something to think about. These figures are based on one income, but the majority of families now must have two incomes. So if you hypothetically had two incomes that were average earnings and you got the average mortgage size, this ratio here would halve to about 4.2. So the incredible thing that that means, it is now harder for a double income couple to buy and pay off a home than it was for a one income couple over all of these years. So during the 1980s and most of the 1990s, even if a family had only one income earner, it was actually easier to buy and repay a home. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Now I know that's not every case and every situation is different, but in general, houses were way, way cheaper and as a result, mortgages were low compared to wages, which meant it didn't take long to save for a deposit and it was also relatively quick to be able to pay off an entire home. 
home. Now because houses were so cheap for boomers, nearly everyone was able to afford one. So this meant the percentage of boomers who own their own home is extremely high. So at the moment, over 80% of boomers own their own home. But if we go back to when boomers were between 30 and 34 years of age, 68% own their own home. But out of those that are currently aged 30 to 34, less than half own their own home. And this is the first time that's happened in Australian history and is actually very tragic in my opinion. The other amazing thing for boomers is that when they were trying to buy a home, average earnings signified by this dark red line was increasing in line with house prices, which is this orangey colored line. Even during the 1990s, wages held up very close to house prices. So that meant if you were working, houses weren't actually getting more expensive compared to wages. So boomers had all this period to be able to buy a home without housing affordability deteriorating. But from the late 1990s, all that changed with house prices outperforming wages by many multiples. So boomers got a great deal, but everyone else got screwed. Now because boomers bought when houses were cheapest, they've benefited the most from crazy house price gains. And this is further exacerbated because many boomers were easily able to pay off their first home and then go on to purchase a number of investment properties. Now the more properties you were able to buy when houses were ultra cheap, the more you've been able to ride the speculative gains. So boomers who bought a number of properties were able to acquire massive wealth with not too much difficulty factor. You might disagree, but houses were cheap back then, man. And that's why boomers shouldn't give young people a hard time when they whinge about the housing market because you've handed them a broken cluster of a market and it's all your... Nah, just kidding. Just look at the difference between house prices in 1981 and 2021 and how they were cheap back then compared to wages to now how expensive they are. And look how many times house prices have increased in the past 40 years. Come on, boomers. Are you having a lend? So what does all this mean for society? Well, it means there's a very large wealth distribution gap between property owners and non-property owners. And very sadly for non-property owners who won't inherit property from their parents may never realize the dream of owning their own home. And because of that, we'll see more of a wealth distribution inequity in Australia. Because if you're a young person, it's not your fault that houses have risen so much faster than wages for the past 20 years, but you're stuck trying to pay a million bucks if you want to live in a major city. And in places like Sydney, all you'll get for that is probably a crumbling shack. So if this continues, it could be the end of a fair go for all Australians. And that, my friends, is an absolute tragedy. Boomers, don't hate me. I'm Biko Constantinos. <laughs>